Welcome to day number three or session three of the Surviving Sickness and Suffering Study or Seminar. I'm Dr. Page, the best guy to see on the worst day of your life. In the last session, session two, we discussed how our focus determines our future and how distraction can bring doubt. We've been studying that passage in Matthew 14 in the life of Peter about how for a moment he lived above his circumstances. He focused on God and he moved towards Jesus in the midst of the storm, in the midst of both those internal and external circumstances and did something very miraculous. He lived above his circumstances and we saw that when he got distracted, doubt began to creep in. And as he lost his focus, he began to also lose his faith. And today we're going to continue that study and look a little bit more about what that means to have our focus fixed on God and how we can live above our circumstances. doesn't necessarily mean that God will deliver us from our circumstances, but He will give us the strength to endure them. So, welcome again to Session 3. We've talked about changing our focus from looking inward to beginning to look upward at God, His nature and His character, and also His promise. But I want you to think about the possibilities that our problems bring, the, uh, the uh, opportunities that we find in our health obstacles. I want you to think about this and look at this slide that for a moment, Peter lived above his circumstance. Somewhere during that, during that time when Jesus was walking on the water and coming to the boat, Peter had this crazy idea, this crazy notion entered his mind. And as he sees Jesus demonstrate this authority over the circumstances, over the winds and waves, he begins to think that if Jesus can do this, and if I'm with Jesus, I can do that too. I can come along with him, and if he gives me the thumbs up, then I too can walk on water. In verse 29 of this passage, it says, Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. That's amazing. Peter was able to walk on water and, in a sense, live above those external circumstances to overcome his fears For a moment, Peter lives victoriously over his circumstances. But alas, we move to verse 30 where it says, When he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And then Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Here we see in this story, that Peter had the potential to live above his circumstances. In spite of all the chaos and all the wind and the storm that was going against him, Peter was able to live above it. And so can we. We can live above our circumstances. You know, if you think about it, we also have the potential to live above our health challenges to live above those external circumstances. I know there are some of you naysayers out there that say, well, of course Peter could do this. I mean, Jesus was right there next to him. But I want you to consider this. We have something or someone even better. If you'll go and you'll study the Upper Room Discourse in John 15 through 17, you'll notice a phrase that he says in John 16, 7, he says, it's a good thing that I'm going away because when I leave, the Holy Spirit will come. And then Jesus goes on to say, and even greater works than I have done will you do when you believe in me. Christian believer, we now have God himself, the Spirit of Christ, living within us. These scriptures describe the Holy Spirit as our paraclete. He comes alongside us. He doesn't come from behind and push us into things. The Spirit doesn't actually walk in front of us and pull us 
into things. He comes alongside and guides and helps, giving us the encouragement, the energy, the equipping that we need to do what God has set before us. That's the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and that's how we can walk above uh, our circumstances in victory like Peter did here. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to just, you know, with your hands say, peace be still, and, you know, physically walk on water. You're not God, but God's Spirit does live within you, and He does give you the power to overcome, at least for sure, those internal uh, storms that we all face. We need to stop here and kind of reflect a little bit on what that means. Jot down what it means that God gives you the potential to live above your adversity and your health circumstances. And the next question is very similar. Do you believe you can live above your circumstances? It'd be great to make a graph, maybe scale this from 1 to 10, 10 being that you believe fully that you can live above your circumstances and maybe a one or zero being that you believe that you cannot live above your circumstances, and write down where you are on that scale or that continuum, and then answer the questions, you know, why do you not believe that you can live above your circumstances, or why not? And then I want you to ask you yourself another set of questions. Where are you in this story? I mean, do you think you best fit with Peter, who... Um, had the crazy notion he could jump out of the boat? Are you more like the disciples wanting to stay in the boat and uh, play it safe? Or are you somewhere in the middle? Maybe that you're entertaining the possibility but want to see kind of what happens to somebody else first. Let's go back to our story with Peter. It says, When he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. You know, Peter had that bad distraction on him. He had that um, distraction that we all get sometimes when we face difficult challenges. You know, Peter's distraction brought doubt. When Peter lost his focus, he lost his faith. And as I've said before, if you show me your focus, I'll show you your future. But I want us to stop now and really think about our focus and go to your journal and I want you to describe the direction of your focus. And maybe do this on a 1 to 10 scale. Uh, 10 being that you're very focused, uh, maybe on um, uh, upward, Godward things. Or maybe a 0 being that you're more inwardly focused. And I want you to brainstorm some ways um, that you can begin to, to, to position or, or reshift your thinking and your focus towards those upward God-honoring things. And then finally, I want you to write down a prayer of declaration. Just uh, uh, just a statement saying, you know, where you want your focus to be. And then I want you to write down a quick prayer, just uh, asking for God to help to keep you focused and to keep your uh, your eyes fixed on Him. And finally, I want us to meditate on this uh, scripture in Isaiah 26, 3. It says this, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And as you meditate upon that verse, I want you to think about um, this just this one aspect of it. I want you to describe in Isaiah 26, 3 uh, what our part is and what God's part is in this promise to be kept in perfect peace. Now in the next session, session number three, we're going to deal with focusing on God kind of from a different perspective. We're going to discuss how uh, the facts and our feelings and our faith all comes together to influence our focus and how do we prioritize each of these, um, each of these entities. And we're going to get more into the details of this upward focus and what we need specifically to do when we're saying to focus on God in the face of adversity. So